Hey guys, it's Robin, your independent Sensi consultant. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today I've got a new kind of video. I am going to be doing a quarterly favorites. So it's not going to be Sensi related. It's not even going to necessarily be bath and body and home fragrance related. Just life favorites for that particular season. Um, and we'll see how that goes. There's been so many times where I'm using something, I'm like, oh, I wish I could tell them about this because it's such a good product, but it doesn't really fit into anywhere on my channel. It's not home fragrance related. It's not beauty related, that sort of thing. So I just don't mention it, but there's so many good things. So, so I took inspiration from Martha over at Martha's Fragrance Corner here on YouTube. She is a newer YouTuber. She does mostly wax related content, but she is one that does favorites videos. And I was like, someone's doing it. Yes, yeah, so go Martha. So if you haven't checked her out already, she is on the newer side here to the wax community. Go check her out. She makes very high quality, amazing videos. You should definitely go give her a like, watch some of her content and see what you think because she has some really good stuff. So with that said, I thought I would also share my favorites because it's something I've been considering for a long time. I just didn't know if you guys would be interested. So I did ask in my last video, a lot of you said you'd be interested in seeing this. So here we go. So I've tried to kind of categorize things into a few different categories. So we have like kitchen and cooking, we have personal, we have home, and we have like kid stuff, kids and pets. The things that we care for, <laughs> kids and pets. Um, I've also got a couple habits I thought I would throw in here because like, I guess it'd be helpful to provide context for my favorites and my lifestyle. So I work full time outside the home. I do have an amazing partner and I have one child and a cat and a dog. So that's my life. My daughter is five, she's in kindergarten. So she's on the younger side. So if your kids are older, you might wanna shift things a little bit. And again, these are just favorites of mine. Um, if you don't like these things, that's okay. If you do, that's great. If you have other favorites, that's amazing too. And if you have other favorites, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Towards the end, I'll also go through some entertainment favorites, um, games, podcasts, shows, that sort of thing. Um, and that'll be towards the end here. So let's hop in with like kitchen and cooking. My favorite for, and this is spring favorites, but these have been a favorite since September when my daughter started school. These are the Bent Go lunch bento boxes. Now I have a couple different styles here. This is the first style and I use this one less often. So they're little bento boxes. They have little, like they open up. They do seal around their compartment. So it is like, if there's liquids in any of these compartments, it'll stay in that compartment and not leak onto other sections, which is great if you're packing like orange slices or grapes or something kind of juicy with bread and like a sandwich, it doesn't get all mucky, which is nice. I always put like a little treat in here, a little piece of chocolate or something like that. And then, yeah, so it just, she can open it easily. She likes the selection and variety. There's always a few little things here. So we usually do a sandwich some goldfish crackers, some fruit, a fruit roll up or something like that, and like a piece of a uh, piece of chocolate or a piece of candy or whatever. Another popular thing for this section is snap peas or carrot sticks, that sort of thing. Now, what I like about these is that these like inside trays lift out. You can throw this in the dishwasher. You can throw this in the dishwasher. They can be separated, which I really appreciate. And yeah, so we like those. The thing I don't like about this particular style of this one is that this does not fit a whole sandwich. So often you'll have to cut the end off the sandwich a little bit and then like cram it in here sometimes or let her eat it for breakfast. So there is that. The other one that I prefer also has the same outside shell. I don't have the outside shell of this next one to show you because it's at school with her right now. So these ones, so this is the inside shell and it comes with these outside covers too. So with this package, you got one outside shell and you got three of these inside trays in different colors and you got three of these plastic lids. So I don't typically use these plastic lids. I think what they're for is if you wanted to meal prep on like Mondays and then have the meals in your fridge ready to go, you could do that. So it comes with these so you can have your meals prepped and just in the fridge. I rarely use these. These also came with little dividers. So they do come with plastic dividers for each of these that you can slide in here to split this compartment in two. I don't, I like that this can fit a whole sandwich very nicely. So what we usually do is sandwich, grapes, and some kind of vegetable there, or goldfish crackers, whatever she feels like. Um, but yeah, same thing. This, These 
snap into the holder, which is the exact same type of holder as this, just a bit bigger. It does still have the waterproof, like, things that snap down over the sections. We love them. And again, these are dishwasher safe. And then with the one shell, it doesn't get very dirty because the food is in here. So I just wipe it down with some paper towel and then switch out this every day for a clean one. So that's what we've been loving for packing lunches. That has been very handy for us and she's really enjoying that as well. And I believe I got these on Zoo Lily. Um, I know I got the, like the three pack of these with the covers and the shell on Zoo Lily. And it was like, I think 35 or $40 for the set. Um, overall though, it's something that we use every day. I feel like it was a pretty good value. I think you can also get these on Amazon. I've seen them there. They might be a bit pricier, but Zoo Lily is where I found them. And with Zoo Lily, things change like on a daily basis. It's kind of like HomeSense, but online or like Marshalls, but online. Um, so you just have to kind of keep checking back. Um, I think you can set email reminders so that if Bent Go comes up, they will email you to let them know. They will email you to let you know that they're, uh, they're available. Another kitchen favorite is something for my water. This is something I've been using a lot. I try to drink a lot of water, but I also really struggle with drinking a lot of water. I just don't like drinking water all that much. So what I have at home and at work is these little water enhancers. These are sugar-free, like liquid water enhancers. I have a whole bunch of different types. It doesn't matter the brand, there's so many out there. I prefer these liquid ones because they just mix in easily. Um, I really like this Orange Crush one. It tastes a lot like Orange Crush and it's zero calorie, zero sugar. Really like that. I also like these Crystal Light ones. There's a strawberry lemonade one or a raspberry lemonade. That's really good. This is the Posh Pomegranate. This one's not a favorite of mine, but the lemonade ones are really good. Um, so yeah, you just open it up, squeeze a little bit into your water and mix it up. And it tastes like juice. It's lovely. It's refreshing. You can use just a tiny bit if you just want like a slightly flavored water. You can use more if you want it heavily flavored. Um, but yeah, there are artificial sweeteners in these. So if that's not okay with you, be aware of that. I'm personally comfortable with artificial sweeteners, so I'm a big fan. Another kitchen favorite is a recipe collection or a person that makes recipes. So, and I should also mention in this video, nothing here is sponsored. Everything was bought and used by me. None of these companies know I exist as far as I'm aware. Um, this is Half Baked Harvest, and I think her name is Tegan. Yeah, Tegan Gerard. There goes Ben. Tegan Gerard, she has an Instagram account. Where's a picture of her? Here it is. There she is. She's adorable. She has an Instagram account. She makes amazing recipes. She has a website, the Instagram as well, and she also has cookbooks. I love her website. You can sign up for a free account, and then you can browse all her recipes, save some to your recipe box so you can go back and use them whenever you want and then she also has the nice hardcover cookbooks as well and they're absolutely beautiful like they're pretty to just even flip through like they're just pretty inside like the artwork is gorgeous she does her own photography too and she's an amazing food photographer and then she also has some like of her like where she lives i think she lives in like colorado or somewhere pretty but yeah super super interesting recipes she does things a little bit different and some of them use ingredients that you can't necessarily find where I live. Um, like we don't have an Asian grocery store where I live. If you live in a big city, you would have that. We don't. But she often does provide substitutions that you could use instead if you can't find certain ingredients. And for the most part, they're pretty down to earth or you could substitute them so that they would be. Um, yeah, so I really like her recipes. I have a couple of her books. But her website is, I think you could get away with not having the books and just use her website and you'd be fine. Like I mostly use her website, but, oh, this is a good one. I made this. This was delicious. It's like a gnocchi soup. It's up a Toscana with gnocchi. Um, yeah, love that. I might make that. I have leftover ham to use. Um, like delicious stuff. Corn chowder, cauliflower soup. Ooh. Pizza, that's a pretty fancy looking pizza. I would honestly just like order something. Um, but yeah, like super, super delicious recipes. Sometimes they're a little bit more complicated than what I would want for a weeknight, um, but for weekends, I love them. And there are certain ones that do work really, really well for during the week. And I'm gonna have it so that there's some pictures of recipes that I've made of hers 
kind of going here. They're my pictures of what I made, so they're not as pretty as what she made, but they're my versions of her recipes. The one I like a lot for weeknights that we use every couple weeks is the Healthier Homemade Hamburger Helper. It's like a healthier homemade version that's less processed of Hamburger Helper. So you have pasta, cheese, a delicious sauce, and ground beef. It's quick and easy to throw together in like half an hour. You can throw some snap peas, some broccoli, whatever you want in there, add some vegetables. It's delicious. So you can find her at Half Baked Harvest on Instagram or Half Baked Harvest, I think, at dot com. I'll put her website here as well. So that concludes kitchen favorites. Now we will move into like personal favorites of like mine. So the first one is kind of a random one, but I use this thing every day of my life and I can't not mention it. This is something I got randomly on a whim from a party my friend was hosting. This was a Norwex party and I got this, they call it like an optic cloth and it's like a little glasses cleaning cloth that you just clip onto your purse or to wherever you want. I keep this on my purse, on my zipper of my purse. It just hangs like a little scarf. It looks super cute, but it's actually a glasses cloth. It works better than any other glasses cloth I've used. It's like a finer texture almost. You can apparently machine wash it. I haven't, I just hand washed it. Um, but yeah, you can just, and the thing I like, is it's got, it's got lots of surface area. So sometimes I'll find things like, you like start rubbing your fingers on it because the cloth isn't big enough. These are quite large and you have two sides to work with too. So mine's a little bit uneven right now, but oh well. That's because I washed it and put it back together. Um, but yeah, love this. I would purchase another one. They have a few different designs and colors. I like this one, but it's got little birds on it. Birds and butterflies. Just butterflies. I thought it was birds until this very moment. Just butterflies. But yeah, love that. It works very well. So if you have glasses or even sunglasses, I would highly recommend one of these. Um, just pick a Norwex consultant in your area. I think you do have to order through consultant. And I don't know if mine can do US orders. So find one in your area. These are amazing. Another favorite is Moody Bee Lip Balm. These are made here in BC where I live. They're 98% natural beeswax lip balms made by a Canadian beekeeper. So I love to support this company. It is small. It is kind of not local to where I am, but in the same province. Um, yeah, they're awesome. They're made in Kimberley, BC, which is, I believe, down on the coast somewhere, I think. Um, but yeah, they're awesome. The ingredients are sweet almond oil, beeswax, uh, grape seed oil, carrot seed oil, avocado oil, hemp seed oil, evening primrose oil, vanilla flavor. This one has bergamot essential oil and vitamin E. So they're lovely, lovely lip balms. This one is London Fog. She has like, I think over a hundred flavors. There's so many. This one is a nice like creamy bergamot tea scent. It's, I would purchase this scent again. If you like London Fogs, this is one you want to try. She also has a lavender London Fog that's very good. Um, I like her vanilla peppermint very much. I've tried many of these, I love them all. They're just a clear balm. They stay nicely on the lips. They just, I have these everywhere. This one's from my nightstand. I have one in my purse. I have some at my desk at work. I have them everywhere. And I give these as gifts all the time as well. So I often get like a bunch of these and then they get gifted to people as well because these are just lovely and I think more people need them. So she does have fairly reasonable prices as well. Um, and her shipping, I think, is free over, I want to say, $20 Canadian. Like, it's fairly reasonable. So, highly recommend checking out Moody Bee. And that, I think, is moodybee.com, but I'll put her information below as well. But yeah, love that lip balm. The next one is kind of one that's going to be most applicable for, like, migraine sufferers or for people who get a lot of headaches. But this is for any kind of head pain, really. I think this is probably something that most people should have in their medicine cabinet or repertoire at home. This is an ice cap. Now I get not a ton of migraines, like I don't get them chronically, but I do get two or three or four a month. So significant. This is a lifesaver. This looks ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but it works so well. So this is called ice cap. There are other ones. This is the one I like. This one, I'll turn it inside out so you can kind of see how it works. You keep it in your freezer at all times. There are ice packs that go in the front and all around the sides. And in the back, there's a great big one that covers the whole back of your head. 
You can put one in the top here. It comes with an ice pack that can go here. I don't get pain in the top of my head during headaches, so I don't put that one in. I just find it kind of bulky. But if you do, it would be useful. Um, you can also, here, I'll put it on. Um, this is a hole for a ponytail. So if you have a migraine and you want the ice to contact the back of your head, you can put your hair up, put your ponytail through here, and then this ice pack here gets better contact with the base of your skull. That's where I like the uh, ice a lot, and this is a nice big ice pack. So I'll put it on, and it looks absolutely absurd, but it's amazing. So you put it on, it covers like to the back of your neck. You can pull this down over your eyes, and if I'm in bed with a migraine, I usually do kind of pull it down like this, because this makes nice contact with like your, your brow bone. It's awesome. You can also adjust the pressure here. So some people don't like compression during a headache. I personally find it feels quite nice. So you can tighten it to your preference and then just kind of Velcro it. And yeah. The other thing is if you just have like a slight headache but you want something kind of cool, if you're feeling okay enough to do stuff still, you can just wear this and like do things. This doesn't prevent you from like functioning. You can wear this and like walk around your house and do stuff. Um, but if you're really not feeling well, you can wear this, go to bed, pull it down over your eyes, and it's amazing. Some people also apparently like to wear it backwards so that this is like really over their eyes. I haven't personally tried that. I personally usually like the large ice pack against the back of my head. Um, but yeah, this thing stays cold on me for about 60 minutes, which is just long enough for me to get some caffeine into me, take my painkillers, go lay down, let them work, and then I should be feeling a little bit better and have to go refreeze this. So like I said, this thing lives in our freezer at all times. It's always in the freezer. As soon as it's warmed up and it needs to go back in, it goes back in the freezer so that it's ready to go. My daughter has used this for her headaches as well. She doesn't get migraines, she's pretty little, but if she's like got like the flu or something, she's enjoyed this as well. It's just a nice cooling sensation. I think if you live somewhere hot, this would be worth having as well. Not for headaches, just for, because it's so pleasant. It's just so refreshing and cool. It can be a little bit cold at first when it's first out of the freezer. Um, the ice packs don't freeze solid, but they do stiffen a bit depending on how cold your freezer is. So you just kind of squish them around a bit and then soften them up. Um, yeah, I love this thing. I don't know how I survived without it. It is like my go-to. Everyone that I know who's a migraine sufferer, I gift them one of these. Like, you need it. If you have migraines, you just need it. I have seen cheaper versions of these on like Amazon and on Instagram ads. I haven't tried those. They seem to don't, they seem like they don't stay cool as long and like they have to go over your eyes in a lot of cases. This one I like because it doesn't have to go over your eyes and it stays cold for a good solid hour. Um, like a solid hour, maybe a little bit longer. So I do really like this one. This one I believe comes in a few sizes. I recommend sizing up um, because it is a fairly snug hat and it does have the ice packs inside which add bulk. So even if you don't think you have a very big head, get like the biggest one or at least size up. Um, I think I got like the extra extra large, even though like I measured at like a large. Um, just get the big one. You'll be happy you did. You can also tighten it with this anyway. So I just recommend getting the biggest you can and going from there. This you can buy on Amazon. Um, I believe it's like $70 Canadian. I'm not sure what it is in the US, but again, well, well, well worth it. If you get headaches or migraines with any frequency at all, um, highly recommend. I know $70 seemed like a lot to me too. So I actually asked for this for Christmas one year and this was like my main Christmas gift. And I was so glad I did because this has been like a literal lifesaver. Um, it's given me days of my life back where I would have been in bed with a migraine all day. I was just in bed for an hour or two with a migraine and this really, really did help it. Um, the ice is so soothing. It does kind of like compress things and provide that. Like it just is really, really helpful. I love this thing. Cannot say enough good things. It's one of my absolute favorite things I've ever had. Next in personal favorites is a clothing company. It is Bloom Chic. So again, not sponsored. I think they do sponsors, but I'm not one of them. This is just my orders that I've made. Um, I have one coming from them right now. I'll try to put pictures here of like what I ordered so you can see. I believe Bloom Chic considers themselves plus size clothing, but they start at size 10, which is like very much average sized. So if you're a size 10 or larger, I think they go to size 10 to 30. 
Um, so a nice wide size range for most people. Um, and they have awesome stuff. So I, depending on, I've got a few things here. I pulled a couple things that I got last summer to show you. So their quality is awesome. Their quality is on par with like, I would say a Chanel, which is like, I think the equivalent of like Lane Bryant in the US. I haven't shopped at Lane Bryant, but like it's equivalent to like Tord and that kind of thing in quality. Um, so this is a shirt I got last summer. I've worn it in a few videos last summer. It's like a little like V-neck tank, super cute. Love this thing, wore it a ton last summer. It's light, it's breezy, it's loose. It is, what is the fabric on this? Um, pro tip, as someone who worked in a clothing store for a long time, um, you can find the contents of fabric by going up the side seam of a garment. It's always in the side seam. This is polyester, 100%. Doesn't feel like polyester, I would have guessed cotton. Um, wash and cool. I don't know what the other symbols mean. But I do wash it in cold and I hang it to dry. Apparently I don't need to hang it to dry because it's polyester. So from now on, I'm gonna put it in the dryer. Um, but before I was just hang, hanging it to dry because I thought it was cotton. But this is lovely. I love this top. So there's that one. Another top I have from there is this one. And again, this is a summery top. Again, for, for spring and summer, I try to purchase less expensive items. And Bloom Chic is a very reasonable price point. It's less expensive than Tord, less expensive than like Pennington's or Chanel in Canada. Um, it's just a lower price point. Kind of maybe at Walmart level or maybe just a tiny hair above, but pretty close to Walmart level in price, but better quality and beautiful styles. Um, so this one is, you got a summer top. This is like a little like empire waist green tank with little buttons on the front and like kind of like a skirty bottom. Super cute. Again, I wore this a lot last summer. And I don't like to spend a ton on spring and summer clothes because A, there's not much to spring and summer clothes. They're just usually fairly basic fabrics. You don't need to have like super fancy summer clothes. I don't feel like, at least especially in my area where it's only summer for a very short time. I do tend to prefer to spend a little bit more on sweaters and winter clothes because sweaters, if they're polyester, they drive me up a wall. Like they get scratchy and itchy and hot and claustrophobic and I hate that. So I do prefer like cotton blends or like higher quality blends of material for sweaters in most cases. So I will spend more on winter clothes than I do on summer clothes, especially because it's winter eight months a year where I live. So for summer clothes, I am loving Bloom Chic. Like I said, I also got another order coming. It is spring clothes. It's got a lot of t-shirts and things like that. So I'm really excited for those. They have beautiful dresses as well if you're into dresses. Um, like very easy to wear, easy to care for, like easy dresses that are just pretty and classic and just beautiful. So they often have sales on. Don't order without a discount code. You can find a discount code by Googling. They usually have sales on of some kind. Spend $100, get 25 off, that sort of thing. Um, so I highly recommend checking for a discount code. And yeah, check their size charts. They seem to be pretty accurate. I do tend to go up a size for, for stiff fabrics and they will say in their information, um, stretchy, yes or no. So this one is not stretchy. So I ordered a size up so it fits loosely and I can comfortably sit down and move around in it. This one is stretchy. So I ordered a size down. So it kind of sits nicer on me. Just use your judgment that way. They do give you a lot of information about what is the fabric, whether it's stretchy or not, what other people said the sizing was like. So you do get a good sense of kind of how things fit. And again, that is Bloom Chic. They do ship within the can within Canada and the US. I'm not sure about the UK or anything like that, um, but check them out, they're awesome. Now for like home and kids and pets. So we have washer whiffs. The one sensey thing you're gonna see in this video, washer whiffs. We use these in every load of laundry we do at our house. We use these all the time. I have many different scents and we use them all the time. Love them. What do they do? They scent your clothes. Is that all they do? Yes, but they do a very good job of it. They are like these crystals. They come with a scoop. You put in one or two scoops per load. I usually do one for clothes, two for bedding and towels. Um, this scent is fluffy fleece. It's kind of a cozy, cuddly, kind of wintry laundry scent. We're just finishing this one up. I also just finished up a Fiji flower, which is currently available. It's amazing. So these are lovely. Again, if you're a regular watcher of my videos, you're probably very familiar with washer whiffs because 
they're something that we use a lot. Another thing that is a favorite for the home, well, we got a puppy in January. He's now a bigger dog because it's April. We had gone through potty training with him and he did a lot of accidents on the carpets and the rugs. And now he's potty trained, but he does this thing where he just like gets excited and dribbles, pee. So nature's miracle. This stuff is the best. If you have pets, you need some of this. This is Nature's Miracle Advanced Severe Mess Enzymatic Formula Stain and Odor Eliminator. So this is apparently an enzyme cleaner, which means there's enzymes in it that you spray onto your fabric. And I actually used this when my daughter had the stomach flu and had some issues on our couch. Um, you clean the surface or clean the fabric, spray this on, and then don't remove it. Like leave it, let it sit, let it dry, do not remove it. Because the enzymes in this spray will eat organic material, and by organic material I mean pee, poop, vomit, that sort of thing, they eat that. And so anything that's going to cause smells is in those substances, obviously. This will eat it and break it down completely so that the actual cause of the odor is gone. It doesn't cover the odor. I mean, it does have a scent to it. It's quite a strong scent, but that's not how this works. Like, that is not the mechanism how this works. It actually, like, breaks down the molecules of the stain. So we had this also as well when we had our previous cat Lenny. He ended up in kidney failure. He passed away about a year and a half ago now. Um, but towards the end of his life he was having a lot of cat pee accidents because cats do that when they're in kidney disease or kidney failure. So he was having a lot of accidents on carpets when he had never done that in his life before. This stuff came to the rescue and if you have cats you know how strong cat urine smells it is just like ammonia strong and it is so hard to get out of things you pretty much have to throw stuff away then this came along and no so there were spots in the carpet where you couldn't just rip up the carpet but if you soaked it like we have like pretty thick carpets so i would just like open this up completely and just like dump it so it would saturate through the carpet into the mattress pad into like the carpet pad underneath and everything um this worked awesome like you can't smell traces of it anywhere so it does really do what it says it works fantastically um i haven't used it anywhere and not had perfect success with it like it is amazing so again cat pee poop dog pee vomit it gets out everything and i mean by get out i mean it gets the smell out you have to like wipe down the actual bulk of the material first but then spray this down once it like looks clean enough and this will get rid of lingering smell for sure and again it might take a few days this works like for like weeks so if it's still a day or two out and you've soaked your sur surface with this and it still smells let it sit just let it sit add more if you want to but it takes like up to a couple weeks it still keeps working for weeks like these enzymes survive as long as there's material to eat so as long as there's material organic material for them to eat they will keep eating it so this will eventually work and it does it's awesome so love nature's miracle red bottle this is the stuff it's wonderful yeah guaranteed to work with your money back includes patented microbes that target your toughest pet odors for use on carpets hard floors for furniture fabrics and more safe for pets and home so yeah love it and you can again get this on amazon and a lot of pet stores have it too and then next we have a favorite of my daughter's. This is Highlights High Five Magazine. She gets a kick out of the fact that it's mail for her. I'm gonna cover our address, but a big high five, especially for Amelia Harris Bowles. So my daughter loves getting mail, so there's that. Um, I signed her up for this a few months ago and now she just like gets so excited. Is my mail here? Is my mail here? So she likes these and we have a nice time going through these and reading them together. They have little stories and poems and little like activities you can do. And a lot of the stories are easy enough that by the time she's like, she's getting to a home, she can almost read some of these herself now, which is nice. Um, it's got like sight words, so it'll have like the actual item and then like their word beneath. So you can associate sight words and then play the game and find all the things. So she likes those. Um, what, there's, there's another game in here she likes too. This is one she likes. This is like, in every single magazine, they have one of these ones and it's like, find all the silly things. So she likes to find the silly things. So here we have a snail with a cinnamon bun on his back. That's pretty silly. 
Um, we have kangaroos in the coffee shop. That's pretty silly. We have coffee costs three bananas. That's crazy. She thinks that's hilarious. Um, we have like a bird's nest on the light. That's pretty crazy. Um, we have a skunk stacking cups. That's pretty silly. Sunshine's eating. That's pretty silly. So she likes to like, that's a fun one for her five-year-olds, you know? So it's a nice little magazine. It's got good stories, um, nice themes. They got poems, stories, games. They have like a Spanish story in each one as well. Um, I think because it's an American magazine, we have her in French immersion. So she does a lot of French at school, um, but she doesn't know Spanish. She does like Dora the Explorer though. So she's got a little bit of Spanish. Um, but yeah, and then it usually has like a snack idea as well. So they're just cute little magazines. When you think of like magazines, you think of like lots of things to look at and see kind of a variety, even in like adults magazines. This is kind of the same thing, but geared towards five-year-olds. It's just kind of fun. It's educational. It's entertaining. It's just like a nice little variety and it was fairly inexpensive. They have sales on these all the time. So we got a year subscription for relatively inexpensively and it's just something to kind of look forward to and do every month. So there's that. Now, High Five magazine is the highlights magazine for kids like I think four to six. Um, there is a highlights magazine for older children and I think there might be one for even older kids too. But that's the one we have right now because of our daughter's age. So yeah, it's really fun. It's worth checking out. The next things I wanted to just talk about are like favorite habits that we've gotten into that have made life easier or have just been really useful. Um, the first one is bath time. So like I said, we both work outside the home full time. So we're not home between like 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Pretty much every day of the week. So we get home, it's almost five. There's dinner to contend with. There's getting stuff ready for bed. There's bath time, all of that. Luckily our daughter's five. She doesn't have homework yet, but that will be coming in future years. Bath time's always tough because we get home, start making dinner, start making dinner. Okay, sit and eat, sit and eat. Okay, now it's 6.30, it's time to get ready for bed. We need bath time. So what we found, has worked very well is we get home start making dinner she goes in the tub so that time when and this would only work if your kids are like over four or like old enough to be in the bath by themselves if your child is old enough to be in the bath by themselves with you within earshot our luckily our guest bathroom is pretty close to the kitchen we can still hear her and talk to her and all of that um so that works well in our house layout and with our child it would depend on the person but bath time during dinner prep time has worked very well for us because we're busy, we're preoccupied making dinner or in some cases waiting for dinner. If we've decided it's a pizza night, we order the food, get her in the tub, wash her up. By the time she gets out, dinner's here, yay. And then we still have time after dinner to enjoy our bedtime story and all of that stuff. So that's worked well for us. And then we have our hands free. We, If we're making dinner, we can throw it in there, wash her, let her play in there and we can cook while she's in there playing and then we can go get her out when it's time to eat. So that works well, but again, it works well because of her age. She's old enough to occupy herself in the tub and be safe in there as long as we can hear her. And we have a game that we play, Marco Polo. If we haven't heard her in like a second, we're like, okay, Marco. And then she'll be like, Polo. So we know she's okay. So if she's like quiet in there, we know that she's good. The other reason that works well is because I do have a partner who is a equal parent and household duty person. So if you're a single parent, that might be more difficult to swing, but it still might be worth trying. But in our case, it works really well because one of us can cook dinner, one of us can wash her, and then we can like swap out and like one gets her out, one serves, and that sort of thing. So it works well having, and again, that's where like our parenting is very much on easy mode. We have one child, there's two of us. We're both very involved, active parents. So like, it just works. <laughs> if we had multiple kids, or if there was just one of us and multiple kids, like I can't imagine, I can't imagine. So kudos to you uh, parents of multiple children or single parents out there for sure. Um, but yeah, that's just something that's worked well for us is bath time during dinner prep or bath time while we're waiting for dinner, um, whatever the, ha the case is that night. That has worked very well for us. The other habit that I have gotten into is at the end of the day, I come home, get in the door, First thing I do, go to the bedroom, change my clothes. Pajamas on, go time, 5 p.m., pajamas. Unless I have to go out again later, pajamas. And I almost never have to go out again later. I make sure I don't have to go out again later because that's not happening. Um, if 8 p.m. rolls around and I'm still wearing a bra, what am I doing with my life? 
Like that is a problem. I just find that like when I get home from work, if I'm if I stay in my clothes, I just feel like the evening hasn't started yet. Like I feel like I'm still like in work mode somehow. And my job is fairly like emotionally intense. So I feel like I just carry that with me and as long as I, until I change. So like for me in my job in particular, I do feel like I have to do some kind of transition to home. Otherwise I just stay kind of like in work mode and kind of wound up. So I do need to put pajamas on. And that sounds so silly, but like that kind of just does the mental switch for me as well. And so now I'm in home mode and we're good and it's fine and it's work is put away. So that is what I find works well for me. And again, if I don't do that, I, I can feel it. Like I feel like I'm kind of wound up and kind of tense still. And like, I'm still worried about like work stuff and work clients and that sort of thing. I'm making, I'm like, I'm thinking about them and if they're okay. And so I feel like if I put my pajamas on, we are home, <laughs> like we are home, we're in home mode and it is all good. So for me, it's a mental shift thing, but I feel like I get more downtime, even though I don't really, like I still get the exact same amount of downtime, but it feels more like downtime because I'm in my pajamas and I'm like in home mode and spending less time in work mode. So sometimes it's about that mental shift, whatever that looks like for you, when you get home from work, it doesn't have to be changing. It could be like listening to a song or like, there's lots of things you can do to transition from work to home. For me, that's what I prefer. Um, but whatever works for you would be, would be good too. So it just makes you feel like you're getting more downtime out of your actual hours out of work. So now we have entertainment. So I've got a few ideas here. I have got a video game that I've actually been really enjoying. Um, I was a big Animal Crossing fan during the pandemic and that has kind of lost its luster for me because they don't update it anymore. So I looked for a new game and someone had suggested to me Dreamlight Valley, which is like a Disney game. And it is available on pretty much every console. So PC, um, Xbox, what's the other one? PlayStation, Switch. We have a Switch, so that's how I play it. I really like it. I recommend it for kids or adults. Like if you're a Disney fan, I highly recommend it. And you don't have to be like a super Disney fan either. Like I'm like not a hardcore Disney fan and I really, really enjoy it. It's fun because it's just, it's Disney, you know? So you get like the whole experience and like the details and the characters and it's just a really fun game. And you have like the island and you have to bring all the characters in. It's, it's fun. There's like quests and it's just, it's a lot of fun. And it's a nice little like break from reality sometimes. So I've really been enjoying that one. And that I believe is pre-release, but you can still purchase it early. Um, so that's what I've done. I've been playing it for months now. So love that one. Highly recommend checking out Dreamlight Valley for you or your kids um, on whatever console you have. Next one is a show. Now I don't have cable. We haven't had cable in like 10, 15 years. Like we just, we quit cable like when we graduated university in 2013. Um, cause we, as students, we had like a student cable package that was less expensive than regular cable. So when we were no longer students after 2013 and they took that away from us, we were like, okay, like we don't need cable then. So we haven't had cable since 2013, which is I guess 10 years. So we've been doing just fine without it. Um, but Netflix and Amazon Prime video we have, and we get Crave once in a while for certain shows. We like Letterkenny. So every December they release a new season of that. So we get it, we get Letterkenny on Crave in December's. Um, we also have Panorama or Paramount, Paramount Plus. We have that and uh, there's another one too. What is it? I can't remember, Discovery? I wanna say Discovery. Um, a show I recommend highly is The White Lotus. There are two seasons of it currently. I believe they're making a third right now. Both seasons that are up now are so good. The premise of the show, without spoiling anything, is that each season takes place at a resort vacation destination. And you follow the staff of the resort, you follow some of the guests of the resort's lives, and you kind of see how their lives cross as their vacation goes on. And you see like some interesting dynamics among like the staff and the, and the patrons of the resort. And you see some interesting dynamics between the patrons and like other people, it's just interesting. And then it is also kind of like a drama-ish, but like very comfortable. It's not like an uncomfortable, scary, tense drama. It's like vacation-y. Um, it's really good. So the last one was in Italy. The one before that was in Hawaii. And every season starts out with somebody dies. You don't know who dies at the beginning. Somebody dies at the beginning. And you don't find out until the very last episode at the very end of the season who died and how or why. So through the entire season, you're trying to guess who died. Oh, does that mean something? Oh, does that mean something? So you're trying to guess who did it or who died. 
the entire season, even though there's other themes going on and all of that stuff. So it's really fun. It's a good watch. Really like it. So I highly recommend that one if you're into, I don't even know, like, there are funny parts. It's not a comedy, though. There's funny parts. There, it's I would say it's mostly a drama. If you've watched it, please let me know below what genre you think it belongs to. Um, I would say drama, but it's not like an intense drama. It's like a fairly low-key drama. And I just like that you get a flavor of every single character's life, and there's so many people involved, and their lives cross, and it's just, I really like it. So it's a good show. Highly recommend. Not one I'd watch with kids around, just FYI. It's not like super, super like dirty or anything, but like I wouldn't watch it with kids around, little ones, um, personally. But yeah. Another favorite is a podcast. Now, I don't read a ton of books. I tend to be like more of a multitasker, so sitting and reading a book for me is something I don't do often anymore. But podcasts. I'll do other things while I'm listening to them. Um, a podcast I love, and it's not going to be for everyone, heads up. I love true crime very much. I also have a very dark sense of humor. So a podcast for me that has kind of fed into my dark sense of humor as well as my love of true crime is called Small Town Murder. It is by two comedians um, and they are friends. So they like tell jokes throughout the story and they have a couple different podcasts. They also have one called Crime and Sports. It's also very good. I prefer Small Town Murder because it's true crime based. So they take a small town murder and they don't usually cover stories that are like heavily covered. So you're not going to get like the classic serial killer stories because those are like very heavily covered by every, everyone else. They tend to do very small cases from small towns of like under 30,000 people all over the US, um, a few in Canada and abroad, mostly the US because the public records are more available. Um, the thing about them and the thing that makes it so I enjoy the podcast is that they do not make jokes about the victim or about the victim's family or about the death itself because that's not funny. That would be messed up. Um, what they joke about is bumbling police forces, silly small town festivals, the murderer themselves and how ridiculous they were for thinking they could get away with this, um, mistakes made that led to their arrest and that sort of thing. Like those are all funny things to poke fun at. And so they do it in a very tasteful way and I'm, I'm tasteful might be pushing it, but <laughs> it is a, a podcast that if you like true crime, if you're not easily offended and if you are okay with comedy and true crime mixing in a way that doesn't degrade the victim or the victim's family, um, you might enjoy it. You might not. It depends. I do. I would say you have to be fairly hard to offend. Um, not that they are offensive, but they do use coarse language quite a bit. They make some jokes that are a bit questionable. Um, I think they're hilarious, but you do have to enjoy that type of humor. If you don't, you're probably not going to enjoy it. Just heads up. Don't come for me if that's the case. I'm warning you now. Um, but if you do like that kind of thing, I love that podcast. Highly recommend it. I listen to every episode. They're hilarious. So that's one. Another one, if you are into true crime but don't want the comedy edge, a very well done true crime podcast that I've been listening to for years is um, True Crime Garage. It again has two male hosts. They are friends. They do not joke though. And the one host who does the bulk of the talking actually runs like a project in his spare time to find missing persons like well like to not f well find missing persons and find the killers of missing people because often they'll find remains and not know who it is or they'll know who it is but don't know who did it so they need to like do dna tests and stuff he actually works as part of a charity to fund those dna tests and like to help find answers for families so it is a more serious take on a very serious issue um yeah, they do a very good job of deep diving into cases, getting a lot of details that weren't made public just through public court records and stuff like that. They don't like do anything they're not supposed to do, um, but they get a lot of details that the media misses and it's just really interesting. They throw out their theories on who they think may have done it without getting into like libel territory, but like they throw out theories and that sort of thing. And it's just really interesting. They do a good job and they do nice deep dives on cases that I wouldn't have ever heard about had I not listened to their podcast. So it is kind of nice to see those cases getting some attention and again that's also another thing i like about small town murder is that they're cases that you wouldn't have necessarily known about unless you lived in that town because they weren't heavily publicized you didn't hear anything about them nationally they're just like fairly small town cases that didn't really get a lot of attention so that is one thing i like about those two podcasts and i highly recommend small town murder if you're into comedy and if you're not so into the comedy aspect then true crime garage is amazing so I listen to both regularly. 
Love them. As far as like family suitability, I would not listen to Small Town Murder or anything that James and Jimmy put out um, with children around just because of the language and the context of some of the jokes being like a little bit crude. Um, again, I don't listen to that podcast with my daughter around. Small Town or True Crime Garage though, I do. So they occasionally, maybe once every two or three episodes, will say like one curse word. It's fine. It's like very rare and like not very common. So True Crime Garage, I am comfortable listening to with my daughter around. Um, Small Town Murder, not so much. That's a me podcast. Um, but yeah, that's just something to kind of note if you're considering listening to them. And that concludes my favorites for the spring. And again, some of these have been spring favorites. Some of them have been just general life favorites this episode. Um, and again, I'm going to do this every three months. So next one should be April, May, June, July. July, we'll do summer favorites. Then in October, we'll do fall favorites. And then January, we'll do winter favorites is the idea. So I would love to hear your favorites below. If I'm missing anything as far as like recipes that I should be checking out or like whatever you're loving, I would love to hear below so that I can check it out too. Um, but yeah, so I will try to put links for everything below. Everything I've mentioned though, you can probably Google or find on Amazon. I have tried to keep things fairly accessible as far as finding them. One thing to notice when you're looking for ice cap, ice cap is with a K, just FYI. So ice cap with a K. Um, other than that, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.